CataractCoach.com. Complete cataract case from one chop to the next. So once you achieve that split, let's proceed to the next chop. Let me show you how. So this is the last in our series for this week of the complete cataract cases, showing the whole case from start to finish. I think it's very useful. These are all surgeries that I did on the very same day in our surgery center. And so there's a lot to be learned here. So cleaning up the surface of the eye there, let's put in our dispersive viscoelastic, get a nice good fill. Here's the big fill coming across, excellent. Now in this case, we're gonna use a steel keratome. Let me show you how we do that as well. And we're gonna make a nice single plane incision here Starting right there at the gray line, nicking those limbal vessels, just barely good tunnel length, and there it is. Very nice. Five millimeter capsule axis. We're going to show you the chop technique here. So one mistake I see people making who are learning chop is they get the one chop and they try to propagate. It doesn't quite propagate. They try again, and then they rotate, and they spend a lot of time preparing and setting up for the next chop. Whereas you want to actually move from one chop to the next chop to the next chop and just do it in, in succession of each other. You want to get this thing done. And that efficiency is not about speed, but it's about spending less time in the eye being causing less iatrogenic problems. Being minimally invasive. So hydrodissection, of course, for the good chop. And to be able to rotate this thing, let's make sure we have good hydrodissection. There's the good rotation. So here comes the part you're waiting for. There's the viscoelastic. Here comes the phaco probe. As soon as we chop it and break it or split that nucleus into two halves, what we're going to do after we get that lash out of the way, golly, what we're going to do is we're going to proceed to the next chop. Let me show you how we do that. So phaco probe going in here. Just let me adjust that sleeve a little bit. Bevel down is my technique. We'll take the chopper in there. So buzz in with the probe. Pass the chopper. Now watch. Here comes the first chop. Two halves are achieved. Now watch. Immediately buzz in again and chop again. Now you've got a quadrant that's been made. Now rotate it. And then buzz and chop. That's the method we're going to do here. And we can even rotate to the other half. Rotate some more. Buzz with the chopper. A probe. Put the chopper on the equator. Boom, now we've got about four or five pieces of nucleus, easy enough just to remove them all. Just emulsify, stay there in the center, the pieces will all come to you. So notice how when I grab a piece, I bring it centrally. I wanna stay a little bit away from the capsule bag, there's another piece. Now we're getting some wild reflections here because this patient's lost a lot of orbital fat. This is Beverly Hills, she's had a blepharoplasty where they took out too much fat. And as a result, we got a lot of pooling of the balanced salt solution on the surface there. And so her eyes are a little bit more sunken in after all that cosmetic surgery. And so that's why we're getting reflections back at the camera and it changes its brightness because the camera is on automatic setting for uh, the brightness. So that looks great. Nucleus out just like that. So you can see what I mean. Watch it again if you need to. That first chop goes down. The nucleus is split and immediately the probe is re-embedded into that hemonuclear piece and chopped again. And that's what you want to do. One chop and another chop and another chop. And it really makes it a very simple method to remove the nucleus. You can also understand why I don't typically use the divide and conquer technique. It's so much more energy placed in the eye and it's a lot less efficient to be able to break or disassemble the nucleus. The, for me, the most efficient way of nuclear disassembly, also the safest, less stress on the capsule, is that chop. So chop, chop, and chop, and nucleus is already broken up into small pieces, easy enough to remove. A little capsule polishing here, cleaning up as much of that lens epithelial cell material as we can. And then we'll get the lens in, in the eye. The eye well is going to be just single piece acrylic lens, very standard, non-toric in this case. And ready to fill up our caps or bag with viscoelastic. Now, if we had a bimanual eye setup, we could do a little more capsule polishing on that sub-incisional area. But in this case, we're gonna go right to placing the eye well. There you go, single piece lens, preloaded injector, chopper fixate the eye via that paracentesis. We'll get this lens dialed into good position. 
So if you're a young guy watching this video, young young gal, let me tell you, you got to learn fake or chop. It's going to make all the difference in the world. If you're going to do cataract surgery for the rest of your, your life, you definitely want to evolve, evolve to these more advanced techniques. And that's not to say I won't do something different in the future. I stay with the cutting edge. So whatever happens with cataract surgery in the future, any new technologies, new techniques, I want to learn them all. And so I think that's the beauty of the Cataract Coach website. We keep up with everything. So a little bit of last nuclear chunk being removed there. Let's go behind that lens, remove any more viscoelastic that may be present or any lens uh, uh, fibers. That looks good. And you can see there's that Rexus too. Rexus is a pretty good size, overlapping that optic. And again, keep in mind, we've enhanced the red reflex for the video. And so you may see these slight little opacities there that are of no concern. You can see the two Prakinji images as well. That's the first and the fourth Prakinji images. Now just cleaning up all that viscoelastic. I want to be thorough here. Um, this patient also has a mild glaucoma, so I don't want to leave viscoelastic in the eye that's going to cause an IOP spike later. So let's hydrate that main incision back and forth nice and gently. That looks like a good seal of that incision. And again, I like the uh, angle sweep method right here just to make sure there's no retained viscoelastic, which there isn't. And finish up by sealing that paracentesis. A little bit of iris prolapse there, we'll fix that. Rehydrate that main incision. Let's just take our time and make sure this is totally sealed. So even a little bit more hydration, a little bit more angle sweep. That looks clean, optic in the position I want. Now let's finish this up. Hydrate that. Use a Wexel soaked in tetracaine to help seal that incision. And it looks great. Thanks for watching.